All right, good morning, everyone. I'm being told to wait. All right, good morning, everyone. It is so great to see all those that were able to make it uh, here this morning. Of course, we're a little light in the designated teen area because they're all at home recovering from what was an amazing night as we had church prom last night. Uh, and uh, that was a celebration of a lot of hard work from people who are also struggling to stay awake right now. So uh, we have much to praise God for. We also have a lot to pray for. So as we start off our service this morning, let's start with a word of prayer and really ask God to be our great comforter and great, uh, great redeemer of all the things that are going on. Father, we thank you so much for every reason we have to worship. Father, this morning we're going to offer up great words of praise, and every one of them is true about you. Father, we stand in awe of your salvation. We stand in awe of your call to come and follow. We, we stand in awe that you would look down and even consider us. And Father, we also stand in awe that, uh, Father, the need for you to be that for everyone is there. Father, uh, we, we lift up the Woods and Eldridge family. As uh, Trisha Woods' uh, godson passed away uh, during open heart surgery. Father, we know that the family is just feeling it and going through it. And God, we know that right now you are closer to them than the skin on their, on their bodies. But God, help them to feel that. Help our prayers to feel, help them. Father, we also know that uh, we are seeing so many things in the news that remind us that we're not quite out of, out of the woods by any stretch when it comes to the pandemic. Father, we know that India is, is going through a resurgent uh, things, and we know now that we are a global community. So as one part suffers, God, we all suffer. Father, comfort them. God, be with all the, the, the struggle and the strife that goes on. We know that the best thing we can do about that is to love one another deeply from the heart. But God, be with those situations. God, work it out. Father, we lift up you today because we know that even the things we don't mention, God, you have covered. The things that we speak uh, under our breath as prayers to you, you hear personally. Father, we ask that you would stretch out your hand and do wonders and signs and miracles in the name of your servant, Jesus. Because of him, we place all of our hope onto you. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.
sickness will rise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth again and skip about like calves coming from their stalls at last you shall be my very own hey guys i can't hear anything that i cause you to be my special boy I shall spare you as a man who has compassion on his son, who does the best he yeah, can. Right, sir. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth again. From their stars at last, you shall be my very own. On the day that I cause you to be my special home, I shall spare you as a man who has compassion on his son, who does the best he can. shall be my very own Only day that I cause you to be my special home I shall spare you as a man Has compassion on his son Who does the best he can But for you shall spare you as a man who has compassion, who has compassion on his son, on his who, son does the best he who does the best he can.
sing at the cross. In 
there's no greater love than this. You have overcome the grave. Your glory fills the highest place. What can separate me now? You go before me. You shield my way. Your hand upholds me. I know you love me. I know you love me. At the cross I bow my knee, where your blood was shed for me. There's no greater love than this. You have overcome the grave. Your glory fills the highest place. What can separate me now? At the cross I bow my knee. Where your blood was shed for me. There's no greater love than can separate me now. You tore the veil, you made a way. When you said that it is done, you tore the veil, you made a way. When you said that it is done, when you said that it falls from my eyes, and you stand before me, I know you love me, I know you love me. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Van Flowers, um, and I'm here to give the contribution talk this morning. Uh, I guess let me tell a little bit uh, something about myself. Um, back in 2011 uh, through 2017, I used to work for the YMCA, uh, and I did before and after care. Uh, currently, I have no children of my own, um, but uh, working there it gave me a little experience, uh, a glimpse into what it's like into fatherhood. Um, <laughs> uh, so all the parents out there, if I say something completely wrong, please correct me, because I would like to learn. Um, so one day, uh, I do before and after care, and in after care, we give the kids snack. And uh, one day, I uh, had about 12 kids, and uh, had just enough of their favorite snacks. Uh, so one child drops their snack on the floor, and uh, she asks, Mr. Van, is it another one? And I'm like, I'm sorry, that's not. So the child begins to get sad, and like I can tell she wanted to cry. But uh, fortunately, uh, it was a child um, that saw that and just willingly gave their snack to this sad child. Um, and I thought to myself, like, man, uh, this kid, the kid that gave away is usually one of the meanest kids there. <laughs> so, and just to see him do that, that just like, man, kids are a conundrum. They are simultaneously the meanest yet the sweetest things around. Um, <laughs> so just looking at that, it just like took me aback. I was like, man, this kid would just willingly gave away their favorite snack just to make somebody else happy. 
Uh, so that perfectly leads into the scripture I want to share. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. It reads, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Um, going back to that child for a sec, uh, that child was happy to make one of his friends happy. Um, and I sometimes think about that and just, am I that happy to give uh not only just financially in time, uh, energy, uh, and just like life stuff in general. Um, and just thinking about situations like that and that scripture, it uh, corrects my heart and gives me that perspective that I'm sorely missing. Um, it's not about what you give or the fact that you can give at all. Are you happy to give? Or are you willing to give? Um, and that willingness to give, it builds happiness and hopefully others see it around like that. Not only was that child happy, I was happy at that moment. And it was like, man, y'all can go outside today. It's a nice summer day. Like the previous days, the kids was out of control and it was like, all right, we we're staying in today. But that moment changed my heart and uh, my mind. So... <laughs> For the kids that's listening, uh, you do it right, you get good uh, good rewards. <laughs> uh, uh, so before I pray, uh, just like uh, to ask everyone this question: Are you a cheerful giver? Um, and before I pray, also just wanted to know um, if you want to give physically, there is a box by the exit. Uh, that you can give or put your money in or tithe or whatever uh, in the box once after dismissal. And if you want to give online, uh, you can go to gatewaycitychurch.com and click on give. On what? Oh, on contribute. All right, so let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to come before you in prayer, uh, to be amongst family. Uh, pray that uh, we are all cheerful givers and uh, whatever we have in our heart, that we give it willingly and not stubbornly. Uh, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. young African child get the best possible start in life. I rise each and every morning just to make sure that each and every kid out there gets that solid foundation for their future. Today we are in Olivenote Bush, which is an established township northwest of Johannesburg. And this is a typical community where we work. These are underserved communities where children really battle to get a great start in life. We know that the first few years of a child's life are the most critical in their development. This is a time of rapid brain development. We know that when children get the right nutrition, the right nurturing, and the right stimulation, they thrive. And that's what we're all about as Hope Hawaii. We want to make sure children have access to those things. We are working in close partnership with preschools around the country and working with parents to give them the knowledge, the skills, and the support to make sure that they provide a nurturing environment for their children to thrive. Principal Mabel Daycare. from 1997 up until 
e community esi pagati guayo, e community esopekayo, e community enganazo in de nini. So ama challenge is wa fesayo, abantuana abanini batwala estratin. So abantuana banye yes ya batata, si batrine la ikaya, uguti bagwazuk funda bagwazuk toluguza, batolugwa bagwazuguba abantuana na bukfana na banya bantuan. Uguba konagwe covid digus affecte gakulu in terms of financially abantuana abaseko gatena seskolweni, but we make sure what we try or what is the is into an angel a right through the wonderful partnership with masmat i go into the communities to identify the centers and also identify the specific needs that are needed in these preschools when i came to the school mabel i find out that their need is infrastructure and it's also the kitchen renovation that's exactly what we did and also we support parents that are unemployed and have children between the age of zero to six years through our program that is called Parent Support Group. We help to stimulate their kids holistically through reading, playing with their children, because it's one of the things that we've realized that actually parents, they don't know how to play with their children and they don't know how to connect with their children. And through this program, we're helping such parents. Women are leading the education of young children across the continent and impacting millions of children. That is why the partnership with Masmat Walmart is extremely important and impacts so many lives. Therefore, we celebrate and honor these women for the amazing work that they're doing in investing in an African child. One, two, three, this program has assisted women to stand up for themselves, actually, to be empowered, to even know how to go and look for employment. Most of the women that we started with in these programs are employed right now. And some who are not employed, they have started their businesses so they can sustain their kids and also sustain themselves. So that's the impact that I've seen. Nyatanda <laughs> We're exceptionally proud of the work being done by the women at Hope Worldwide and the leaders at the preschools. Our partnership with Masmart has been over a period of 10 years. And in that period, we have been able to equip preschools with material support, training of educators, equipment support, and also infrastructure and with the purpose of assisting and equipping them to adhere to government norms and standards and to be able to get registered and possibly get funding with government. We've partnered with Hope Worldwide because they've got the footprint across Africa and they can reach all these ECD centers to make an impactful contribution in the lives of young kids. Thanks to this partnership, we've been able to positively impact over 60,000 children. We're on? Okay. That's amazing. And did we also mention that Walmart happens to be in the heartland? <laughs> So, good morning. Parents, I know you're a little tired. Um, teens, good evening. I know you're not getting out of bed until 4 o'clock this afternoon, so thanks for watching this. Um, I want to say a special thank you to everybody that helped out with prom, big or small, um, the folks that helped with food, registration, uh, checking people in, just doing general chaperoning, and especially, especially Jeanette Mix for spearheading prom again. Thank you, Jeanette. I know she's sleeping. She's going to watch this later. We love you. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about what's happening going forward. Uh, this Wednesday, ladies, we have our Women's Midweek, and uh, we're going to have a panel um, that we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. And uh, Krista Molden is, is overseeing that. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Uh, that'll be at 7 p.m. The link uh, can be found in your email and also on the church app. 
Uh, we have a congregational devotional coming up, not this Friday, but the Friday following, uh, May 7th. Uh, so please uh, save the date for that, everybody. Uh, that will take place on Zoom using the same link that we're uh, streaming on right now. It'll be this one here. And that link is also found in your app and on the, web on the website and in your email. Uh, camp. Have you registered for camp? Do you need to register for camp? There are 26 spots left to register for camp. 26. And when they are gone, they are gone. So... Get registered. If you are not yet registered, it is grades 5 through 12 this year. Uh, we're allowing the fifth graders to join for a one-time treat for this year. Uh, and uh, registration can be found on our website. You can, or you can go directly to camper.gatewaycitychurch.info to get registered as a camper. If you want to register as a counselor, they are taking counselor applications, and we would love to have you. Counselor at gatewaycitychurch.info. And uh, I think that's, oh, uh, tomorrow night, guys, we've got, we've got some time to pray because that's what we do as disciples. So we have a couple of prayer options. I do want to mention um, we, the elders' prayer time has changed from 8.30 on Mondays to 7.30 on Mondays, this Monday and every Monday going forward. And also the Subers' prayer warrior time will take place on Zoom. Um, and that is 7.30? Yes, 7.30. Same time. It says 8.15. I need to change that, Harry Drew. I'm sorry. <laughs> so 8.15. Oh, it is 8.15. Okay, it's 8.15. He says it's 8.15. So <laughs> it's 8.15. His is on Zoom. The elders is over the phone. Both are amazing. Come and pray. Um, and that's tomorrow night. And uh, that's going to do it uh, for now. We do have our quiet times, of course, this week with the Hawkins and the Moldens. You can find the links for those in the app and on your email. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Vince now. He's going to preach the word. Ah, good morning, everyone. It is good to be together. We got a great group in here today. Kind of makes me feel like singing a little bit. Come on, let's sing a song, shall we? Somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind. Took a little time and prayed for me. Don't you know they got down on their knees? I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Don't you know the church they prayed? You know they had me on their mind. I took a little time and prayed for me. Don't you know they got down on their knees? I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. For me, don't you know my sister pray for you know she thank you sister for praying for me. Mm -hmm. She took a little time and thanks for praying for me, Gwen Modelin. Mm -hmm. And don't you know she you know that I'm so glad. Well, you know that I'm so glad she prayed for me. Don't you know my Jesus pray? You know he, I tell you, he took a little time and prayed for him. Don't you know he got down on, you know that I'm so glad he, don't you know that I'm so glad he prayed for me. Don't you know my Jesus prayed. Come on, sing on out. I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he prayed for me. You may be seated. Oh, that was fun. It's good to be together this morning. If you're just joining us, we are doing a sit. We are in the book of Acts. Going through the book of Acts, we're finding those good news stories in the book of Acts because we have a theme this year of good news. Because we believe that the gospel, well, it's good news. If it's nothing else, it is good news, right? And when you read through the book of Acts, you can't help but see the Spirit moving and doing all of these amazing and incredible things. And every one of them, every one of them is good news. And, of course, it's good for us 
to read through the book of Acts and to see that our stories, your story, my story, your story, it is good news. And I know that's not easy today. Sometimes it can feel like there's only bad news everywhere you go. Well, there isn't. There's a lot of good news. I read an article this week that said in 2020, during the COVID pandemic, that in American media, only 91% of the reporting on COVID was bad news. 91%. You probably felt that. 91%. We were, by far, we led the world in promoting the badness around COVID, all right? And of course, you know, I think Satan loves it when we feel like everything is bad. Not everything is bad. There's always a silver lining, amen? There's always for people who believe we always know that God is working out something good for those of us that believe, amen? There's always something good, but I tell you, it's good to read through the book of Acts and to see the good news story. So this morning's story is a familiar one to us all. It's Saul's conversion in Acts chapter 9. And in reading through this story, there are some things that jumped out at to, to me and that, um, well, frankly, as I, I've read it so many times, perhaps I didn't notice. Maybe you have. And so let's get into Acts chapter 9 together this morning. Amen. Let's pray first. God, we thank you for this morning and thank you for how awesome you are. Uh, God, thank you that uh, we get to pray to you. Thank you, Jesus, that you prayed for us. Thank you that you think of us. You're mindful of us. As Bill prayed earlier, you are close to the brokenhearted, Father. And those of us that are going through whatever we're going through, Father, I pray that we will just realize in our most difficult times that you're there for us. But we love you, God. We thank you for the book of Acts. We thank you for the Bible. Thank you for good news. I pray, God, we love you. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I, too, wanted to lift up, uh, especially I wanted to again say thank you to Jeanette Mix for making Prime Awesome, for Kristen Molden for making the decorations phenomenal, for everyone that served. There's a lot of people that have worked on that, uh, several people that worked on that prom committee. Thank you for doing that. Uh, I saw some of the pictures. It was a gorgeous site. Uh, it was a gorgeous venue in Fenton at where they were, and the kids, they looked they look gorgeous together. Sounds like the uh, lock-in was a success as well. I saw they had a game truck. That's a thing. You pull a truck up, and you get in it, and you play games all night, you know? So it looks like a fun adult event, you know? I also want to thank the house church leaders. Last Sunday, you guys preached the word at parks and different venues, and I heard that went awesome as well. Thank you, house church leaders. Acts chapter 9. But before we get into Acts chapter 9, <laughs> let's go to Acts chapter 8. Because I think, you know, uh, Bill preached an incredible sermon out here, right, uh, on Stephen. But you notice in Acts chapter 8, verse 1, it says, On that day a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. I mean, I want you to get, wrap your mind around that word. I mean, Luke uses the word destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off men and women and put them in prison. He's destroying the church. He is going to people's homes. He's become a police officer. He is going from house to house. <laughs> He's not dragging off just men. He's dragging women as well, throwing them in prison. I mean, this dude, he is, well, and there's plenty of scriptures in the Old Testament that, hey, if someone's teaching something that is false, well, they may
they need to be put to death or certainly go to trial. And so Paul, every part of him, he believes he's doing what is right, but he is destroying the church by going to people's houses. I mean, I'm imagining him. I've gotten into this bounty hunter thing on YouTube. I don't know. Sometimes you just go down these rabbit holes. You go, why am I watching this? This guy's name Patty, Patty something. <laughs> it's so fascinating, though. He's a little bitty dude. And he, like, breaks in these people's houses, and he's trying to drag these people out. Because, you know, bounty hunters can do that, apparently. I haven't figured out if the show is real or fake, and don't crush me, okay, by telling me it's fake, because, you know, I don't watch it a lot, but every now and then I'll pick up an episode, and it's somewhat entertaining, like in a train wreck type way, okay? <laughs> Imagine Paul kicking in people's doors and finding people and dragging them out of their house and throwing them in prison. Are you with me here? This is insane. Well, let's pick it up in Acts chapter 9. The Bible says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. Now, look at this. He went to the high priest. And he asked the high priest for letters to the synagogues in Damascus. So Paul says, I've been in the homes. Now I need to go to the synagogues. And I need to find these people. In Damascus, by the way, which is about 114 miles away from Jerusalem, he is really reaching out. You know what I'm saying? So that if he found any there who belonged to the way... Whether men or women, not discriminating, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. And as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up. And go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and then I eat or drink. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias! Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he's praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hand on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, um, <clears throat> I've heard about this. I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on his name. I want you to just stop for a second, okay? I mean, God does some things that, frankly, you got to ask yourself, like, this is crazy. You know, God first calls Saul, says, Saul, Saul. And then he goes to Ananias, and he only, Ananias. And Ananias is obviously a better listener than Saul, or his heart's not as hard. He just says Ananias once. Ananias, yes, Lord. I want you to go to Judas' house on Straight Street. There's a guy there from Tarsus. And let me tell you, he is waiting for a guy named Ananias to come see you. I mean, God's got a lot of detail here he's already covered. But I love Ananias' response. Ananias feels like he needs to give God a current event update. <laughs> Excuse me, God, I don't know if you've been watching the news lately. But I've heard about this guy. In fact, he's been doing this. And the guy's going, um, I, what are you talking about, you know? I've heard about this guy. He's a bad dude. In fact, he's come here to do bad things. And it's basically, can you pick somebody else? <laughs> it's 
Is there anybody else that can do this? And then God says to him, verse 15, go! There's an exclamation point there. That's why I had the screen. <laughs> this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hand on Saul, he said, Brother Saul. I mean, I think he's a little bit scared to go, hey, man, what's up, bro? (laughs) Nice Saul. Nice Saul. At least that's how I would have done it. You know what I mean? (laughs) Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, though, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. And the church had to say, Amen. Amen. I know, it's like you've never read it before, right? I love this story. I think Paul loves this story because you see it be retold. In Acts 22, Acts 26, Paul loves this story. I got, we got Luke counting it twice. I got to imagine that everywhere Paul went, he goes, okay, I got to tell you a story. You ready for this one? Okay, I'm going to tell you this story. It is going to blow your mind. I was persecuted, church, breathing out mercy with the radio. Okay, let me get past that part, okay? I mean, what a crazy story. You know, I, I, I love that God calls Saul twice. Because Saul is in good company. You know, you ever have God call you twice? You know, when you're a kid and your mom says, Vincent Hawkins, you know, okay. You know what I mean? You know, If your mom ever said, Tink Sullivan, she throw in the middle name, you know it's something getting ready to go down. Well, I don't know if you know, the Bible's not really much in the last names. So we have a few instances in the Bible where God calls a name twice. Remember, Abraham, Abraham, Genesis 22. When Abraham is about to, he's about to kill his son, sacrifice his only son. And God calls, Abraham, Abraham. And God, yes, Lord. You remember the story of Moses? Moses goes from sort of the, 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 the palace, right, to now he's just a, a goat herder. And he's really hiding out, and God comes to him, he, the whole burning bush suing, and he, Moses gets near and says, Moses, Moses. And, of course, we know in Luke 10, Jesus says, Martha, Martha. And there's a famous scene, I believe, in Luke 22, where Jesus says to Peter, Simon, Simon, the Lord, you know, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. And we have Saul here now. He's on the road. Now, I want you to just picture what's going on. This is a bad dude. From the perspective, if you're a Christian at this time, This is a bad dude. And I'm going to tell you what this feels a little bit like. If I was to have a modern example, this would be a little bit like Derek Chauvin. That's what it feels a little bit like to me. Like, this is a bad dude. That's the impression. Let me imagine if that guy was going to now lead the movement of God. I know we don't really have space for that. You see, but I want you to, want you to try to wrap your mind around what, what probably Ananias is feeling in this moment. How he might be feeling the tension, the conflict he might be feeling with God and with Saul. 
But Saul is walking along the road, and the, the Bible says, Saul, when he tells the story to King Agrippa in Acts 26, he says it was in the middle of the day. It was around noon. And then he said a light flash, and the light was brighter than the sun. Now, I don't know what kind of light can hit you in the middle of the day that's so bright it's brighter than the sun. Can you imagine such a light? A light that's brighter than the sun? That would be Jesus, amen. But a light that's brighter than the sun's. It hit, it flashed around him, it blinded him. I don't know, I mean, he'd be blinded for life. And the Bible says it was that moment that it took that, it knocked him to the ground. And I don't know if he was on a horse or not. He's traveling 100 miles to Damascus, not even in his town. He has to get the high priest to sign the paper so he can go to a, go into a synagogue in, a, in an area, a region that even is not his own. He is in, he's way, it took a week to travel to Damascus. And here he is, he is so fired up about his faith. And God blinded him, knocked him off of his feet. But I think Paul is an important character in this story, for sure. But I think so is Ananias. Because Ananias is really the reluctant witness. He doesn't want to do this. You know, I will say this. You know, when God calls you to do something, there are always moments when we feel like, Back it up, baby. I mean, we want to back up and back out. We, we just, we don't want to engage. Because God, sometimes it seems like he asks us to do the craziest thing, doesn't he? I mean, God goes to Abraham and says, okay, here's the deal. You're going to have a son. Uh, okay, God, I'm 100 years old. My wife's not far behind me. Okay, we're going to have a kid. Thank you for the child, God. We really appreciate it. Now... I want you to take that son and sacrifice him, going, boop, boop. Come on, God. That is crazy. It doesn't make any sense. And then God comes to Moses. Moses is a, is a he, he's, you know, I'm returned to Egypt where I killed somebody. I can't even speak. I have a speech impediment. I, you, no, no, you don't want me leading anybody. Boop, boop, back up. God goes, no, 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 you're the perfect guy. I want you to go into Egypt, and I want you to get my people out of Egypt. What are you talking about? Get your people out of Egypt. That doesn't make any sense. I will not be engaging in such nonsense, God. And then Ananias. Ananias just, he goes, God, there's, <laughs> come on. You, you've got to have a better, a better plan than this. Have you thought this through, God? I mean, the guy is really, I mean, he is going from house to house. Did you hear that house to house part, God? And by the way, did you hear that he's traveled over 100 miles so he can now come into our synagogue and go into our houses in our synagogue and drag people back? He is, God, this guy's, this guy's crazy. I think, you're, I think your movement will do fine without him. We can do this. We don't need him. This is not how, it, this, this is not best. And God goes, I want you to witness. Where is I share this because we are at a crossroads again as disciples. You know, we, we go through the book of Acts and there are some great stories and there's some great news. And there's some powerful stuff here, but I believe that more than ever, we as Christians, we have got to be faithful witnesses. Yeah. Oh, I know it's hard. It's difficult. It's more challenging now than ever because you've got to do it on Zoom. You can't get close to people. How am I going to study the Bible? How am I going to reach out? What do I share? And really, is that what I need to be doing? I'm so distracted by many things. But this is the time more than ever when God's calling us. To do some crazy things. God's calling us to be a radical people. 
God's calling us, put it in drive. Or put your foot on the gas. God's calling us to be faithful witnesses, not reluctant witnesses. God wants us to be the people that he called us to be. You know, we have been given the spirit. Just like Paul. And I says, I've come so that you may receive the Holy Spirit. And Paul gets the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that is inside of every disciple. It's that spirit, you know, the spirit of love and joy and peace and patience. That spirit of faithfulness. That spirit of absolute power. God has given that to us, and I'm telling you, now more than ever, we cannot shrink back. We've got to step forward. We've got to step up. It's because I believe God's calling all of us. He's saying, Forrest, Forrest. He says, Anna, Anna. Yeah. He's saying to each of us, that you've got to step up. That the world, what it needs more than ever before, it needs Jesus. It needs the scales to fall from their eyes. It needs people like Ananias that are willing to come in and to lay our hands on people. Maybe not physically, but spiritually. And to say, brother, sister, the Lord has sent me. The Lord has sent me to, to share the truth with you. The Lord has sent me to, to share some love with you. The Lord has sent me to just pray with you, pray for you. But I'm afraid that we're shrinking back. I'm afraid that we've made a lot of excuses for why we're not reaching out. And I say this over and over again. I want you to know that America is becoming less Christian. Just in case you thought, there's nobody in America to save, and now we must go to some distant foreign land. America is less Christian, more secular than ever. And it's going to take disciples that are willing to hear God's call. Oh, I know there's a lot of things we can focus on, Ryan. There's a lot of things we can major in. But it's going to take disciples of Jesus that once again will hear the call that will be willing to answer God and do some of the most ridiculous things. Ridiculous things like pray with your neighbor next door. I mean, radical, crazy things. Like invite your coworker to coffee and a lunch. Maybe do some things that are just absolutely, just completely out of radical. Maybe you only share your faith with one person or 10 people. Maybe you'll just, maybe you'll just pray with someone. But I think this is a call of the hour. Let me say this. This is not just for the lost world. But this is also how we refine our faith. Come on, ben. This is also how we stay engaged spiritually this is how we this is how we we're obeying god and in obeying god it is well it's it's like van said you always get a reward children <laughs> brothers and sisters we've been called to something we didn't just call we didn't just i didn't become a disciple just so i can come to church and sway back and forth Although I like the swing and the singing. I love it. Amen. But I didn't just come to church. I didn't become a disciple just to sing songs. I didn't. In fact, the first church I went to, the singing wasn't that great. Not from where I came from. I was like, what is this? They did do one song, Sanctuary. It was beautiful. But everything else was weird. Offbeat. It was just, it was goofy. No, 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 no. We don't do, we... We, we probably are not the best. We don't have the best worship in the world, okay? And we want it to be great. Praise God to Ken and Tali and everyone that makes it awesome. But what we are is we're people that we, we hear Jesus say, Vince, Vince. 
There are people out there that need God's word. And I know there's many that won't listen, but there are the souls out there that are just going to change things forever. Because, see, all of us were souls. Didn't God knock you on your rear end, right? Didn't God just knock you off of your feet? Now, baby, okay? Didn't he knock you off your feet and, and bring you to your senses and lead you to someone and show you how blind you were? That's good news. You've got to share that with people. Like Saul, you've got to love telling that story. Tell that story of how you were met, how you were reached out to. Share that. And watch how God changes soul after soul. He'll change you too. He'll change your household. He'll change your marriage. He'll change your friendships. He'll change everything about you. What's ailing us most is that we've got to give away, be hospitable with all of the spiritual goodness that God's given us. Amen. You said you weren't going to talk about it, but I just can't keep it to myself. Amen. This is not just an evangelism lesson, amen, but this is a call for us to not be, to be reluctant witnesses no more. We must testify to all that we see, all that we've experienced, and all that we've heard. God bless. Hello, good morning, family. There we go. Yeah, so, so my name is Ken King, and I have the honor of, of leading our thoughts today in communion. Um, so I'm going to be looking at a scripture, um, Matthew 27, um, verse um, 27 through 31. Um, so you don't have to turn there if you like. I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Um, it goes, Then the soldiers led Jesus away into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet rope on him. Then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. Um, they put a staff in his right hand, and they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, king of the Jews, um, they, they said. They spat on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. And after they mocked him, they took off the robe and placed his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to be crucified. Um, so I share that scripture with you. Um, this, I guess, will take you back um, a few years so um, so, so a lot of us have seen the movie called The Passion of the Christ. You know, so it's a movie about you know, the, the crucifixion of Jesus and his last days here on earth. And uh, so when this movie had first came out, I was not a Christian and I had zero desire to be one. Um, but I did have a group of friends that I grew up with who really wanted to see this movie. So I just went out with them just, um, just to hang out with them, um, not knowing what was going on in that movie. So, so the movie passed me by as a blur, so I didn't know what was going on at all. Um, but this was the scene that stuck out to me. And it didn't stick out for any righteous reason. It wasn't because I was cut um, about what Jesus was doing for me. It stuck out to me because this scene in the movie made me laugh. And, and I knew sitting there in the theater that this was not the appropriate response. But that was my original response to the cross. And, and so even now, like, when I look at this scripture, I want to shy away, like, ugh, I love because I, I see myself right there with them soldiers mocking Jesus. And, um, and so I guess with that in mind, with that negative response, we do have a positive response um, to the cross. Um, that's going to be in Luke um, 23, verse 24. And I'm going to go ahead and share that scripture as well. And it goes, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And right there, it's also Mike and Jesus, and, and, and that's true for everyone that's in, um, in here. Um, whether it's Mike and Jesus, whether you came to the cross with pride, arrogance, lust, impurity in your heart, it was at that moment that Jesus pleaded to God, forgive us, they did not know what they were doing. And because of this forgiveness, and however we originally came to the cross, we don't have to come to the cross that way anymore. But, but now we can get to bow down and worship 
um, the God that we serve. Amen. And so as you take up the, um, the our bread in, in the cup, you know, we can think about how we once were and how we, are, uh, how we can be going forward with the, with the, with the blood of Christ. Um, so bow your head with me as we pray. Um, dear glory, God in heaven, I just want to um, thank you for this day, for this awesome message, and just for you just giving us forgiveness um, to take us from the, the pitiful state of being that we were and showing us how we can be, to show us how we should be um, in your name. Lord, I love you. Jesus, and I pray all these things. Amen. 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 You know, as we're adjusting, uh, we used to wait till the uh, ushers kind of got done before we came up to close the service. Now we just listen for the paper to stop crinkling <laughs> as the sign that it's time to bring it, bring it on home. I want to first, before we do anything else, I first want to respond to what the Spirit has put on the speaker's hearts. You know, we were reminded uh, very humbly by Van uh, this morning about just the power of doing good, no matter if you are the meanest kid, that there is, there is a call, there is a desire that's, that God places in each one of us that says, man, my best life is when I give. My, my, my best response to God is when I give. And then, of course, during the, uh, during the communion, Ken, thanks for being so humble about that. that that's got to be a tough memory. But yet one that I think we all relate to, right? How we didn't make much of Jesus before we really sat down and studied him out. And just to be reminded that, that there are many who don't understand the power of that gift. And they are waiting to hear a reason to believe. And praise God that someone did that for Ken. And I just thought that was such a great setup for, you know, because the Spirit put on Vince's heart to talk about something that I don't know about you, but did you hear it? Did you hear that cracking in your heart that uh, as he kept saying things like, man, it is time to be radical. And you're like, oh no, what's the radical thing? Oh, take someone out for coffee? I guess that is radical. Oh, r stop backing away from doing what I know I'm supposed to be doing. I guess that's radical. But you want to know what makes it radical? Is when because of what God's done for us. Because of what we've known that we've done to God. In response of repentance with a contrite heart, we decide, I'm just going to go and love people. I'm going to love them virtually. If I can't meet, them, meet with them physically, I'm going to, I'm going to offer myself to, for prayer. I'm going to be there. If someone says, hey, could you pray for me? I'm not going to just go, yes. I'm going to do it right then and there. Uh, when, when I see people who I, I don't know, and I'm, I'm going to get to know them. Why? Because who knows? what they may need. 
They may have just laughed at the passion. We don't know. And I think the call of the service today is that we just be reminded. Man, this is what love produces. It produces a desire to keep loving more people. And so, guys, thank you for letting the Holy Spirit move you this morning. Uh, this was an awesome, awesome service. Yes, and so now I want to kind of close this out. But I want to do it from Scripture itself. I want you to know how God thinks of you. And what he would say, I believe, if he was here with us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory and majesty, dominion and authority before all time, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And you are dismissed.